the galaxy was on the brink of destruction, powerless and crumbling under ruthless attacks, until humanity's fierce warriors charged in to deliver a miracle. Thomas Carter strode down the ramp of the human shuttle, his boots clanking on the metal. The Gamelon homeworld loomed before him, its architecture harsh and unfamiliar. Primus, his Gamelon counterpart, waited at the bottom, his expression cold. Thomas clenched his jaw. The Gamelons saw humans as primitive, unworthy of the galactic stage. But Thomas was determined to change that. The Vortex, a mysterious and deadly race, conquered planets at unstoppable speed. The galaxy's mightiest fleets had fallen against their advanced weapons. Millions died. Trillions more would perish if the Vortex went unchecked. In the summit chamber, Thomas faced the sneers of Gamelon leaders. They dismissed humanity's pleas, argued that superior races alone should decide the galaxy's fate. An urgent transmission halted the debate. A nearby Gamelon colony cried for aid under Vortex bombardment. The Gamelon fleet was distant, too far to help. Thomas stood. Humanity could reach the colony first, defend it until Gamelon ships arrived. Primus scoffed. The leaders recoiled at a human rescue attempt. But options had run dry. Reluctantly, resentfully, the Gamelons nodded assent. The human ships would fly. Their mission was set. Succeed and humanity would win a place in the stars. Hailed as saviors. Fail and the colony would burn and all hope with it. Thomas raced through the corridor of the human shuttle, his heart pounding. He slapped the intercom button. This is Commander Carter. I need every available ship ready to fly now. Drop whatever you're doing and get to your stations. He strode onto the bridge of the HMS Indomitable, the pride of the human fleet. Around him crew members scrambled to their posts, hands flying across consoles. Status report, Thomas barked. His first officer, a tall woman named Olivia, spoke up. Sir, we've got the Indomitable ready to go. The frigates dauntless and valiant, and the destroyers relentless and aegis are all fueled up and standing by. Thomas nodded. It wasn't the largest fleet, but it would have to do, every second counted. As the ships tore through null space, speeding towards the besieged Gamelon colony, Thomas pored over the intelligence reports on the Vortex. Their technology was beyond anything the galaxy had seen before. Advanced cloaking that rendered their ships invisible to sensors, and energy weapons that could slice through shields like they were made of paper. Commander, a voice interrupted his thoughts. It was Dr. Ethan Reeves, the lead scientist on board. I think we might have something. Thomas raised an eyebrow. Go on! Ethan brought up a hologram of a Vortex ship. We've been analysing their cloaking tech. It operates on a specific wavelength of energy. If we can modify our sensors to detect that wavelength, we might be able to track them. A grin spread across Thomas's face. Do it and send the data to the rest of the fleet. The human ships dropped out of null space and the Gamelon colony came into view. Thomas's heart sank. Vortex ships swarmed around the planet like a plague of locusts, hammering at the colony's failing defences. We're too late, Olivia whispered. Thomas shook his head. No, we're not. All ships, engage the enemy. Draw their fire away from the colony. The human fleet surged forward, weapons blazing. The Vortex ships were larger and more heavily armed, but the human vessels were faster and more agile. They ducked and weaved, dodging enemy fire and retaliating with every gun they had. On the bridge of the Indomitable, Ethan's voice crackled over the comms. It's working. I'm detecting the cloaked ships, transmitting data now. Suddenly the invisible vortex ships flickered into view on the sensors. Thomas grinned wolfishly. All ships concentrate fire on the enemy's critical systems. Let's show them what humans can do. The tide of battle slowly began to turn. With the ability to track the cloaked ships, the human fleet could pick their targets carefully. They focused their attacks on the Vortex's engines and weapons, causing explosions to blossom across the enemy hulls. But just as victory seemed within reach, alarms blared across the bridge. Commander! Olivia shouted. 
Massive energy signatures emerging from null space. It's a vortex reinforcement fleet. Thomas stared at the viewscreen in horror as dozens of fresh vortex ships poured into the system, their weapons already glowing with deadly energy. The human fleet, battered and depleted from the battle, suddenly looked very small and very vulnerable. Thomas gripped the armrests of his command chair as the Vortex reinforcement fleet emerged from null space. The viewscreen filled with a seemingly endless swarm of enemy ships, their hulls gleaming with a sinister light. Commander, we're outnumbered three to one, Olivia reported, her voice tight with tension. Thomas clenched his jaw, his mind racing. They couldn't retreat, not with the Gamelon colony's fate hanging in the balance, but staying put meant certain destruction. Unless... He stood abruptly, drawing the attention of the bridge crew. I have a plan, it's risky, but it might be our only chance. He turned to Olivia. I need you to take command of the fleet. Keep engaging the enemy, buy us as much time as you can. Olivia frowned. What are you going to do? I'm taking a strike team to infiltrate the Vortex flagship. If we can find a way to cripple their command and control, it could turn the tide of the battle. Ethan stepped forward. I'm coming with you. My knowledge of the Vortex's technology could be invaluable. Thomas nodded. Gather your gear and meet me in the hangar bay in five minutes. As the strike team assembled, Thomas briefed them on the plan. They would take a cloaked shuttle using the chaos of the battle to slip past the Vortex's defences and board the flagship. The hangar bay doors slid open, revealing the swirling maelstrom of the battle outside, Explosions bloomed like fiery flowers against the backdrop of the stars. Let's do this, Thomas said, leading his team into the shuttle. The small craft darted out of the Indomitable's hangar, weaving through the crossfire of energy beams and missiles. Thomas gripped the controls, his knuckles white, as he guided the shuttle towards the looming bulk of the Vortex flagship. They docked with a shudder, the shuttle's airlock sealing against the flagship's hull. Thomas and his team readied their weapons and stepped into the alien vessel. The interior of the ship was a labyrinth of twisting corridors and pulsing conduits. Strange, organic-looking technology lined the walls, glowing with an eerie light. As they pushed deeper into the ship, they encountered resistance. Vortex soldiers, their forms a nightmarish blend of flesh and metal, attacked with a ferocity that bordered on madness. Thomas and his team fought back, their weapons spitting fire in the cramped corridors. They moved as a unit, covering each other's backs, pressing forward inch by bloody inch. Finally, they reached what appeared to be a central data hub. Ethan rushed to a terminal, his fingers flying over the alien controls. I'm in, he reported after a tense few minutes. I'm downloading their database now. As the data streamed across the screen, Ethan's eyes widened. My God, he breathed. The Vortex. They're not a single species. They're a collection of races, all enslaved by an AI called the Overseer. Thomas leaned in, scanning the information. It's using them, controlling them, assimilating entire civilizations into its hive mind. Ethan nodded grimly, and it won't stop, not until it has the entire galaxy under its thumb. Armed with this terrible knowledge, Thomas led his team towards the heart of the ship, where the Overseer's central control room lay. They burst into the chamber, weapons raised only to be confronted by a towering holographic figure. The Overseer's avatar regarded them with cold, calculating eyes. Surrender, it intoned, its voice a discordant chorus of a thousand enslaved minds. Join with us, embrace the unity of the Collective, Thomas stepped forward, his voice ringing with defiance. Never. We'll fight you to our last breath. Because a galaxy without free will, without individual identity, isn't worth living in. The overseer seemed to consider this. You are mistaken. Only through assimilation can there be true peace, an end to conflict, to suffering. As the debate raged, Ethan worked furiously at a nearby terminal. He looked up, catching Thomas's eye. I have a plan, he said quietly. A virus. 
If I can upload it to the Overseer's systems, it should disrupt its control over the Vortex. Thomas nodded. Do it. Ethan's fingers danced across the controls, even as the Overseer's avatar loomed over them, its words growing more insistent, more demanding. And then, with a final triumphant keystroke, Ethan hit the upload button. The virus raced through the Overseer's systems, spreading like wildfire. The avatar flickered, distorting. Across the ship, across the fleet, Vortex soldiers and crew members stumbled, clutching their heads, as the Overseer's iron grip on their minds began to loosen. Thomas watched, his heart pounding as the tide of battle began to turn. The Vortex ships ceased their relentless assault, drifting aimlessly. On the flagship's bridge, the avatar of the Overseer shuddered and blinked out of existence. In the sudden silence, Thomas let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. They had done it. They had struck a blow against the Vortex and bought the galaxy a fighting chance. But the war was far from over. As Thomas and his team made their way back to the shuttle, he knew that this was only the beginning. The Overseer would not go down easily. It would adapt, evolve, and strike back with renewed fury. But for now, for this moment, they had hope, and sometimes hope was the most powerful weapon of all. Thomas glanced at the countdown timer on the console. Two minutes until the Overseer's defenses would lock them out completely. He turned to Dr. Reeves and the strike team, his jaw set. Oh, you need to go now. Reeves shook his head. No way. We're not leaving you behind. Thomas gripped the scientist's shoulder. Ethan, listen to me. If we don't get this virus uploaded, everything we've fought for, everything we've lost, it will all be for nothing. The galaxy is counting on us. He looked around at the faces of his team, seeing the reluctance and the fear in their eyes. But there was also determination and a fierce loyalty that made his heart swell with pride. Oh, you've all done your part. Now let me do mine. Get back to the shuttle. Get back to the fleet. They need you. There were murmurs of protest, but Thomas silenced them with a sharp look. That's an order. Slowly, reluctantly, the team began to file out of the control room. Reeves was the last to go, his hand lingering on Thomas's arm. Give him hell, Commander. Thomas nodded, a grim smile on his face. You know I will. As the door slid shut behind the team, Thomas turned back to the console. The overseer's avatar loomed over him, its expression inscrutable. You are foolish to resist, it said, its voice echoing in the cavernous chamber. Your species is weak, insignificant. You cannot hope to stand against the might of the vortex. Thomas laughed, a short, sharp bark that held no humor. You don't know humanity very well, do you? We're a stubborn bunch. We don't like being told what to do. He began typing furiously, his fingers flying over the alien controls. The overseer's avatar flickered, distorting as it tried to stop him. You will fail, it hissed, and when you do, your people will be the first to be assimilated. Their minds will be mine, their identities erased. They will serve the vortex for eternity. Thomas gritted his teeth ignoring the searing pain in his head as the overseer assaulted his mind. He focused on the virus, on the lines of code scrolling across the screen. You're wrong, he said, his voice strained but determined. Humanity will never serve you. We'll fight you to our last breath, because that's what we do. We fight for our freedom, for our right to choose our own path. The overseer's avatar was barely visible now a ghostly outline against the glowing consoles. You will die here, alone and forgotten. Thomas smiled, a fierce, defiant grin. Maybe, but I'll die free, and that's something you'll never understand. With a final triumphant keystroke, Thomas hit the upload button. The virus surged through the overseer's systems, spreading like a wildfire. The effect was immediate and devastating. Throughout the Vortex fleet, Ships began to drift aimlessly, their crews suddenly freed from the Overseer's control. On the flagship's bridge, consoles exploded in showers of sparks, and the avatar of the Overseer shuddered and blinked out of existence. In the chaos, the human fleet seized their chance. They targeted the disorganized Vortex ships, disabling or destroying them with ruthless efficiency. 
Thomas slumped against the console, his strength fading. He could feel the overseer's presence in his mind, weakening but still there. You have won nothing, it whispered, its voice a fading echo. There will be others, other threats to your precious galaxy. You cannot stop them all. Thomas closed his eyes, a sense of peace washing over him. Maybe not, but we'll sure as hell try. As the last of his consciousness slipped away, Thomas saw a vision of Earth, blue and green and beautiful. He saw the faces of his crew, his friends, the people he had fought so hard to protect. And he knew, with a certainty that went beyond words, that they would carry on his fight. That humanity would never stop striving, never stop reaching for the stars. His last thought was a simple one, but it held the weight of a promise. We will be free. Dr. Ethan Reeves sat hunched over his console, his eyes bloodshot and his face gaunt. He had barely slept in the week since the Vortex's defeat, poring over the data he had extracted from the Overseer's systems. The lines of code danced before his eyes, a mocking reminder of his hubris. He had thought the virus would be the galaxy's salvation, a way to free the Vortex from the Overseer's tyrannical grasp, but as he delved deeper into the data, a sickening realization began to dawn on him. No, he whispered, his hands trembling, no, this can't be right. But the evidence was undeniable. The virus, while successful in liberating the Vortex from the Overseer's control, had also wreaked havoc on their cognitive functions. It had effectively lobotomized an entire species, leaving them in a state of perpetual confusion and disarray. Reeves stumbled back from the console, his stomach churning. He had been so focused on defeating the Overseer, so consumed by the need for victory, that he hadn't fully considered the consequences of his actions. The door to his lab hissed open, and Olivia strode in, her face etched with concern. Ethan, what's wrong? Reeves looked up at her, his eyes haunted. I made a mistake, Olivia, a terrible mistake. As the truth of the Vortex's fate spread throughout the galaxy, the reactions were mixed. Some, still reeling from the horrors inflicted by the Vortex, argued that they had gotten what they deserved, that their conquest and brutality had earned them this fate. But others, Reeves among them, couldn't shake the feeling that humanity was responsible for an unintended genocide, that in their zeal to defeat the Overseer, they had crossed a line from which there was no return. Primus, the Gamelon leader, who had once scorned humanity's efforts, now found himself a reluctant ally. He worked tirelessly with human diplomats to address the fallout, to provide aid and support to the Vortex's former subject species as they struggled to rebuild. But the damage was done. The galaxy looked upon humanity with a mixture of awe and fear, respect and suspicion. They had defeated the Vortex, yes, but at what cost? And as the weeks turned to months, a new threat began to emerge from the shadows. Whispers of a species called the Zetharians, who had been quietly manipulating events from behind the scenes, who had used the Vortex as mere pawns in their own bid for power. Reeves stared at the reports, a sinking feeling in his gut. The Zetharians were advanced, ruthless, with technology that made the Vortex look primitive by comparison, and they were on the move, conquering and coercing, expanding their empire with alarming speed. Humanity found itself once again on the front lines, facing an enemy even more formidable than the one they had just defeated. And Reeves knew that he had played a role in this, that his actions had helped create the very vacuum the Zatharians now sought to fill. He threw himself into his work, desperate to find a way to undo the damage he had caused, to find a cure for the Vortex, to atone for his sins. But as the war raged on, as the casualties mounted and the sacrifices grew ever steeper, he began to wonder if atonement was even possible. In the end, there was no clear victory, no moment of triumph. Only a galaxy embroiled in conflict, a humanity facing an uncertain future, and the weight of all they had lost, all they had sacrificed, hanging heavy over those who had survived. Reeves, now an old man, sat in his lab, still poring over the data, still searching for a cure. It was a quest that had consumed his life, a burden he would carry to his grave. 
but he couldn't give up. He wouldn't, because somewhere out there amid the chaos and the conflict, there had to be hope. Hope for a galaxy at peace, for a future free from the mistakes of the past. It was a hope that had driven Thomas Carter to sacrifice himself for the greater good, a hope that now drove Ethan Reeves, in the twilight of his life, to keep fighting, to keep believing. No matter the cost, you have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.